Hello, and welcome back to my Saturday show. I'm John Browski, filmmaker and author, coming to you live from my studio at Waterfront Productions in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you for being a part of my show, and welcome. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Kevin Sherman's a great friend of mine. He's helping me out with all this setup here that I got. And um, I think everyone will be excited to see what I've come up with with the help of my friends like Kevin and others. Again, we're really helping each other through all this. This is awesome. Hey, Jane, how are you? Yeah, Psycho Killer is awesome. You know, I think I might start my shows with some different, you know, songs each time. So welcome. This is a fun time. I'm not sure if you guys see my shirt. It's kind of cool. I got it at a convention when I was at conventions last year. Hey Eric, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I got a lot of cool stuff to show you guys today. Um, so let's go over really quick the live product signings and how that works. So let's see what we got here. Ooh, look at that. So how this works is if you go to my site, which is at store.johnborowski.com, and you make a purchase, and if you use the coupon code CRIME, you get 20% off all of my products. And once you do that, I'll be able to see your orders live on my Weebly slash Square store, and I will be able to autograph them live. So, then I would change to this camera mode, and when you make a purchase, let's say you purchased the Ed Gein file, a Psycho's Confession and Case Documents. Let's say you purchase that. I open the book, the Ed Gein file. I autograph it to you. And you, whoever makes purchases today and selects autograph as an option, you will be sent this whole video, this entire video. So as a little memory piece, you'll be able to have a video of your live signing. So again, I'm trying to bring the convention atmosphere into my home and have special guests on, which we're going to get to soon as well. There's my desktop. And that's how it works. So again, if you see the scroll and you go to my store, I'm going to do live autographs and personalizations. You could ask for something personalized. I'll write whatever you like in the book. If you want to buy books for friends, send it to them. I do that as well. Um, and yeah, I, I'll be able to see it live. This is awesome. You know, we've got this up and running now. And I'm going to do every show, I'm going to do one giveaway at the end of the show. Whoever places the last order before 2 o'clock, actually before 3 o'clock, I'm getting time zones confused. I interviewed uh, Harold Schechter on my show recently, and he was in New York, so I'm still kind of on that time zone. So by the end of the show, the show lasts an hour, so by the end of the show, whoever makes the last purchase, you'll get a freebie. And I'll show you what that is at the end of the show. So there's going to be a freebie giveaway at the end of every show. You have to stick around for the entire show, though, so you got to suffer through me. Um, so, yeah, and then also orders over $30. If anyone places an order over $30, you will receive... Oh, it looks kind of really red there and cool. It's not that red, actually. It's just a little overblown on this camera. But I've got two more of these left. I'm printing more of these, but whoever places orders today for over $20 gets the last two of these. And it's these were the first postcards that were printed of my mug shot, which was created in my blood by artist Vincent Castiglia. So I've got two more of these left, and I'll give these away to whoever... And I'll autograph them to whoever makes purchases over $30 today. So we've got those going on. You know, I've got all this freebie stuff. Um, so what else is going on today, too, is the auction. Now, I've got this auction going on, um, which includes serial killer autographs and memorabilia, true crime, archival materials. So if you want to check that out, it ends tonight. So you have a chance until midnight tonight to possibly bid and win these items. They're awesome. I'm going to show you them now. Let's see how this works over here.
Okay, so this is the auction. If you go to 32auctions.com backslash Borowski collection, that's just go to 32 auctions, type in John Borowski collection, that's where it's located at. And I'm going to actually show you guys some of the things that are on here. The big piece here is the Gein book, Edward Gein, which was written by the judge in the case, Robert Goldmar. And this book contains his autograph, only his autograph, an actual signature of his, nothing else, but it's hardcover in pristine condition with the judge's autograph. And if we go to look at all the items, we have an original Albert Fish case photograph. It's one of the AP photos, and on the back is written a, a description of what the picture is. And the picture is actually Detective William King and Grace Bud's father and brother at the courthouse. An autographed serial killer culture poster, which was autographed by many people which are involved in the film. And actually, the film is premiering tonight on new platforms, as well as some of my other films and programs will be distributed in on further platforms. The Carl Panzram limited edition DVD, this is the last one I have left, it's sealed. And what's on that is you get the first printing, the first thousand DVDs came with this limited edition certificate, which is autographed by me. It has Panzram's signature, obviously pulled, but not his real signature. And there's they were numbered and on the back of it, you've got his fingerprints here too, but on the back of it is one of his papers, his legacy of hate papers that he wrote. So check out these auctions, 32auctions.com, the John Browski collection. This ends tonight at midnight. We've got a couple Charles Manson autographs here. I kind of lowered the price a little bit, but I'm hoping somebody will grab these. Manson autographs, very rare. There's a Dorothea Puente autograph talking about uh, the recipes. She did a book about recipes. Here's a Gijikine original artwork by one of the members of Marilyn Manson's band. And then a Richard Ramirez autographed hand tracing. And there's also, it's a set with an, his autograph on the envelope as well as this hand tracing. And then a Richard Speck original mugshot. It's an actual photograph on the back is written Joliet and some other thing about a dentist. So we've got that. Hey, Phil, how are you? Hey, Kevin. Hey, everyone. So that's the auction. That's what's going on. Check that out. Ends tonight at midnight. And I've also added some wanted flyers to my site. So when you go to my store, and you go to the shop now, you go here for wanted flyers. And it's pretty cool. These are interesting. I'm gonna show you better images of these, but these are wanted flyers, death certificates, and fingerprint charts for some of the most notorious cases ever known. So let's see if we go here, I wanna show you guys. So this is one of them. It's a package that I believe there's seven of them for now. I'm going to be adding to them also, but for now there are seven of these. One is the arrest for kidnapping, for kidnapping of Grace Bud, which she was murdered by Albert Fish, but this was a flyer for when Albert Fish gave his fake name as Frank Howard. So this is included in the bundle of wanted flyers, fingerprint charts, and death certificates on the site, which is only 10 bucks. So it's pretty cool. So for 10 bucks, you're gonna get all of these. Jeff Baldwin, which was Carl Panzram, that was one of his aliases. The $50 reward poster for when he escaped from Oregon. These are all eight and a half by 11 size. Bundy's Wanted by the FBI Flyer. El Capone's fingerprint chart. Another Bundy Wanted by the FBI Flyer. These are a little low res just to fit them on here but they look great yeah, they're really they're high res they're really nice and then ed gein's fingerprint chart 
something that always fascinated me, and I've never found an answer to it as to why they never had a mugshot of Ed Gein. Pretty interesting. Richard Speck did do, do some art, Eric. Um, I've seen some of it, and I think Rick Staten may have owned some of it. This is Gacy's death certificate, which is also included in the bundle of wanted flyers, fingerprint charts, and death certificates on my web store. So you could check those out. They're actually pretty cool. I'm trying to build more of a bundle, so I'm going to be adding to that as time goes by. But for now, there are the seven included in there. And definitely check those out. Next thing I wanted to talk about was Crimes of Our Times. So this is my show. I have my Saturday 2 o'clock Central Standard Time show, which is my Facebook Live show. So this is kind of my show. I also, I also do support other artists on this show, but my Thursday night show is really for other artists. So it's exposing other artists and people within the true crime or oddity genre to a new audience. And that's been going really well. So I wanted to show you guys here. This is the site. So if you go to Get Vocal, getvokl.com, go to the site, add me as a friend, subscribe to my show, Crimes of Our Times. Thursday is our True Crime Day. Check out their other programs on Thursdays. So all Thursday is True Crime. Wednesday is their sex show. Check out Wednesday's show by Sunny Megatron, her sex show. It's awesome. So when you go to the crimes go to get vocal and crimes of our times to see my show when you go to the site it shows the upcoming shows as well as if you go to the recorded tab you can watch past shows now these are unedited shows so if you wanted to see any of these shows as well they're also on my youtube channel so if you go to my youtube channel which is filmmaker john b and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the current Crimes of Our Times shows. So far, there are four of them. So you could see all their... First one was writing The Killers and Cannibals and Serial Pleasures, Sick Rick Masks, Rick Fisher, Harold Schechter was on last week. Great show. So you could watch these shows here. So if you click on any of them, you'll be able to see. This show actually came out really nice with Harold Schechter, who's one of the, I call him the, grand, the godfathers of the true crime genre. So, you know, wrote a lot of books in the late 80s, early 90s that are definitive books on these subjects. So you could check that out as well. Sweet, I'm really getting a handle on this, right, Kevin? It's looking good. Yay, Stephanie, how are you? Yeah, if you check out Get Vocal on Wednesdays, it's the Wednesdays are their sex shows. So every Wednesday, they have these topics all about sex. And I highly recommend Sunny Megatron's show. I think she's 8 or 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. So you could check that out. Hi, Renee, how are you? Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. So... Last week, as I said, we had Harold Schechter on the Crimes of Our Times show. And next week is going to be a very interesting show. It's going to be Gen Peter Vronsky and Jennifer Weiss. Um, definitely is going to be a very interesting show. I wanted to show you guys a couple more things here. Peter Vronsky is known for his books, Serial Killers, The Method and Madness of Monsters, and also Female Serial Killers, which is another great book. So Peter Vronsky is going to be on my Get Vocal show next Thursday, if you check that out. It's really, really interesting stuff. So Peter Vronsky, is visiting Richard Cottingham along with the daughter of one of Richard Cottingham's victims, Jennifer Weiss. And they will both be on the show next Thursday to discuss visiting Richard Cottingham, how Peter Vronsky literally bumped into a serial killer in New York, 
when he had visited there, and he also had run into Andre Chikatilo. So, you know, it's going to be another fascinating hour. Last show with Harold Schechter was amazing. I highly recommend you, everyone, check that out. After Peter Vronsky, we're going to have another great special guest on the May 14th show, which is going to be Steve Giangelo with Real Life Monsters. Now, I was introduced to Steve's work without even knowing him when I first started studying serial killers. This was one of the first books I had ever read. And obviously, having this really weird, cool red cover was something that drew me in, you know, drew me in, of course. But this was it. Very simple book. This was his first book. But this was one of the books that really drew me into the world of serial killers. Both of these books are phenomenal. This is the new version of it, Real Life Monsters, a psychological examination. So Steve's going to be on my May 14th show. Highly recommend tuning in so you could listen to Steve's work. It's really phenomenal. Steve also teaches a class on serial killers. So he's a wealth of knowledge. And he, Steve will be appearing in my film and, on John Wayne Gacy. Or miniseries. We don't know where the heck it's going now. <laughs> Are you? I think somebody's listening to my microphones. Yeah, Eric, I I am going to have a special guest. One of these Thursday nights, I am going to have an unannounced. I'm going to announce the special guest, but I'm not going to talk about who it is. All my guests are special, Eric. What are you talking about? I mean, Harold Schechter was, you know, special. Everyone's special. You know, collectors, everyone in this field are special. So, but I'm going to have, um, I'm trying to work it out. I'm going to have a, a interesting special guest uh, appear on one of my Thursday night show. I'm working on it. So, I'm working on it. Believe me, great stuff is yet to come. These shows on Get Vocal are only getting better and better. So, all right, nobody's bought any products yet. Oh, also, I added another new product. Whoever buys, I'm going to autograph live. I want to also talk to you guys about my other new product. If I could sign in PayPal here. Just got to check because sometimes I worry that the orders are going through on PayPal. So I got to check those too. I'm making these new note cards. So these are the upcoming shows for Crimes of Our Times. Harold Schechter was last Thursday. Next Thursday is Peter Vronsky and Jennifer Weiss. So, I'm not sure if anyone knows what this is. I'm sure some out there will know. I'm sure these viewers will know exactly what this is. Anyone? Anyone guess? Anyone guess what this is? So, this is the x-ray of Albert Fish's abdomen, the serial killer Albert Fish, and cannibal. So when Albert Fish was apprehended, he told the authorities that he would punish himself as penance for murdering and cannibalizing little children. They didn't believe him. So they took him to a hospital and took an x-ray of his abdomen. And this is what showed up. There are 29 needles that Albert Fish stuck behind his perineum and worked it their way up into his abdomen. So what you're seeing here is Fish's abdomen and legs, and all those are 29 needles broken, some full, some huge, still stuck in Albert Fish's body. There was a big urban myth that Albert Fish shorted out the electric chair, which he never did. That was a big urban myth. But, uh, you know, people want to hold on to these urban myths and after I finished the Albert Fish film, I got in an argument with somebody online and I told them that Fish never shorted out the electric chair because I have the book of the executioner who was present and he said nothing unusual happened. But the people still want to believe these urban legends and myths on these serial killers. So, 
Sometimes people don't want to know the truth. So what I did was, let's see if this is it. I'm going to show you guys this. When I released Albert Fish on DVD, the first thousand DVDs came with these inserts. And what these inserts were, and you could see March 27, 2007, they were all numbered and autographed. What these were, were transparencies. So it's actually as if you're looking at Albert Fish's x-ray. Again, these were given out with the first thousand DVDs, but I've decided to release Albert Fish's x-rays again. So these are for sale on my website as a transparency, eight and a half by 11. So you could go to my site But this is what it looks like. It's huge. For some reason, this first one print, printed with a little bit of a pink tint, but I have to work on the printing. But it'll be, it's actually black and white and transparent, so you will be able to see all of the needles in Fish's body. So if you go to my website, my store, And it's store.johnborowski.com. And again, all day Saturday, every Saturday, if you use the discount code CRIME, you get 20% off all my products. And if you go to the store and you go to Shop Now and you go here to the Albert Fish X-Ray, this is where you'll purchase it. It's $24.99 or I'll autograph it for $29.99. Again, this shows it's just an amazing amazing piece that everyone has to have. You know what would be great? If anyone buys this and you could put it in one of those see-through frames. You know, I've got Keith Jesperson's letter frame in one of those. I'll show you guys here. So as an idea, just to give you guys an idea, purchase this X right here. And then get one of these frames that you could put the x-ray in and you'll actually be able to pull it off your shelf you know, and you'll be able to show people the Albert Fish x-ray. That even looks cool just like that. But this is a letter I received from Keith Jesperson when he wrote me at one of my events asking me to make a film on his life. So this was a letter from Keith Jesperson. So I display it this way in my studio. But again, you guys could purchase the Albert Fish X-ray from my website and put it in one of these really cool frames. So again, this is what it looks like. And uh, it's kind of another true crime must have for everyone's collection. For $24.99, it's a steal. And I'll autograph it for $29.99. What a deal. Yeah, Jane, Peter's great, Jen's awesome, great people, you know. Um, having, uh, you know, I've been having some good luck with guests. I had, you know, one with an ego who I decided not to have on my show. So um, everyone's pretty amenable, you know. I just wish people would get along a little bit more. Um, and I'm also going to be releasing these note cards I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fly through some of these other things here first I want to show you guys the note cards that I'm gonna be we'll get back to all this okay so these are gonna be my new note cards and I'm not sure if I'm going to have these limited edition but these are gonna be sent to my top fans or thank you cards you know just something to write on an autograph for people that make large purchases or top fans. And this is pretty interesting. The front of the postcard has me when I'm holding serial killer Peter Curtin's head, as well as Gacy's brain in a jar. Again, this is low res on here, but it looks much better in person. So 
Yeah, there's that. So I wanted to also discuss the products that I have on sale today, which I'm doing live signings for. H.H. H. Holmes, America's First Serial Killer DVD, Albert Fish, and Cine Found Salvation DVD. And I also have prints. So these are 11 by 17 prints. This was a print of Albert Fish done by the artist Fred Burkhart. These are beautiful, amazing prints. And I'll autograph any of these if you like. Just select the autograph option when you make a purchase. Carl Panzram DVD. Again, I have posters of all of these too, 11 by 17. Serial Killer Culture DVD, Serial Culture, Killer Culture TV, Season 1, 2, and 3 is being worked on right now. I have Season 1 and 2 on DVD for sale now. Bloodlines on Vincent Castiglia, the artist who paints in blood. Painted my portrait in human blood, which I'm selling off of the site. So you could buy the print of my portrait in my blood. You can check that out. That's a large print. I think it's 16 by 20 or somewhere around there. So it's a large print, a little bit more expensive, but worth it. Poster for my next film and miniseries, The John Wayne Gacy Murders. So I'm definitely working on this film. You know, I, I put an update online about the John Wayne Gacy murder. So what's going on now with it is obviously for my ultimate vision of the film, I the project first started out as a film, but then I acquired so much material that it's grown into a miniseries. So I've got enough material for a minimum four to six hour miniseries. That's my ultimate vision. But the problem now is I cannot reach people or locations to interview to lock in that miniseries version. So I'm most likely going to do like a 90 minute movie just to release something for now it, and it'll be a little teaser of what's to come and hopefully use that as a selling piece for the miniseries and maybe raise fundings because for the film the idea is to kind of create an opening a, a kind of prelude and an epilogue that kind of gives hints of what was before and after so that's what I'm doing with the John Wayne Gacy project it's it's not dead in the water at all, believe me. It's just on pause like a lot, you know, during this coronavirus, that's the problem. So I am working, um, there are many projects that I'm working on now to get out there as well as running these shows. So once these shows, you know, I have them scheduled a couple months out, then I'm going to get back to finishing up the Pans Ram book and the Gacy film. And I'm working with editor Arvid Christina, who's editing season three of Serial Killer Culture TV. So I'm working, I'm crazy busy with projects, you know, content creator, getting the stuff out for you. All of my works have been picked up internationally through Film Hub. So you will be seeing my works appear on further English speaking territories worldwide, at least until I could um, raise funds to get my films translated. So let's see, who do we got here? Yay, the Dahmer book, we've got a sale. Okay. Um, yeah, light box. You know, you can get cheap light boxes for, you know, these x-rays at, um, you can get them at, uh, just on Amazon, 50 bucks for a, for a light box for these Albert Fish x-rays. I mean, they're just, they're really cool. They're just amazing. So definitely frameable, great prints. Okay, so I'm just checking the orders. Going to start autographing here soon. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay once the orders are placed. All right, Dahmer's Confession. So we've got a Dahmer's Confession book. All right. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa, for this. Dahmer's Confession, The Milwaukee Cannibals' Arrest Statements. Fascinating book. At the end of the book, I put a art gallery of artists who did works on Dahmer and their reasons for doing so. So you see their artist statement. This plays into the serial killer culture aspect, and that's why I added this art gallery in the back of the book. But the entire book is really amazing. There's the cover art by Annie Clift. Just some great cover art there. 
phenomenal. I had to put it on the cover. Some letters, but the majority of it is actual arrest statements. This is Dahmer stating exactly what he did to his 17 victims, who he did it to, when he did it. This book is a must-have for anyone interested in Dahmer's case. So our first autograph of the day today Okay, to Melissa. Don't look in the fridge. Remember that. And for Gacy, it's don't look in the crawl space. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, I was thinking about that the other day that Dahmer, Gacy, and kind of H.H. H. Holmes, you know, they all had these homes, these buildings in which they murdered and possibly kept their victims in. So interesting, you know, their M.O.s and psychology are definitely different, but Gacy and Holmes are very similar. Sweet. Thank you so much, Melissa. Going to be sending this out to you. Don't forget, we have a free giveaway at the end of the show, so whoever places the last order today gets our free giveaway. Sweet. Hey, Bruce, how are you? Bruce LaMasters here. Check out Bruce LaMasters' blog, Killer's Crawl Space. I believe Bruce just got a letter, is getting another letter from Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. So check out Bruce's work. Again, this is all fascinating stuff. Bruce was on my show the first show actually writing the serial killers. Bruce has written to some interesting serial killers, including BTK. <laughs> Dahmer the Milwaukee muncher. I like that one. <laughs> Not a carpet muncher, but a muncher. <laughs> he ate. <laughs> he ate and he ate. <laughs> uh, Eric, you mean the Gacy Crawl Space cover? The Gacy Crawl Space cover is in the hands of the Illinois State Police. So that is one of the items that I have to film and I cannot access it during lockdown. So there are some items that I that are imperative that I get to for the Gacy film, but unfortunate for the Gacy miniseries. You know, I keep, I gotta change my mindset here. For the Gacy miniseries, there are a lot of items I either can't get to or people that I can't interview right now, so that's on pause. But I will be editing a Gacy film to release at least under the um, coronavirus quarantines because I have this product. I'm not going to just sit on product. I'm going to produce. I'm producing probably more content now than before. I've reached into my archives. I'm releasing a new serial killer culture TV season. So still working. If anything, I'm busier than before f learning how to make these online, you know, shows up and running and communicate with my friends and fans and get the products and content to you guys that you want. So that was our first order. Thank you very much, Melissa, for that. That was awesome. Let me see if there's any PayPal's here. I always check that too, because sometimes, again, there's a little lag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check out Bruce Lamaster Killer Crawl Space, and uh, he just posted something about getting a Tiger King letter today. Um, what does a guy got to do to hold Gacy's braid? Well, you know, you've got to be John Borowski. <laughs> no, I mean, really, it was because I interviewed Helen Morrison. Helen Morrison was John Wayne Gacy's psychiatrist. So John Wayne Gacy willed Helen Morrison his brain. So she has it. Well, she had it for the interview. And I think Zach Baggins was trying to buy it from her. You know, it's interesting, you know. It's interesting that somebody big with money or as rich, like someone like Zach Baggins, could say, hey, I want to buy Gacy's brain, and it's all over TMZ. And then a little guy like me tries to do some sort of interesting press release, 
in which I set up a fundraiser to buy Gacy's, the new house on Gacy's property to sell it to make a memorial for the victims, sent the press release out to everybody in Chicago, sent it to TMZ, didn't get one request for an interview, not one. Now, what's more fascinating than a serial killer in Chicago, I mean, serial killer, a filmmaker in Chicago who wants to buy a serial killer's property to demolish the house and make a memorial on it. To me, that's fascinating. That's news. But again, you know, when you're the little guy, you're almost always going to be the little guy. But that's fine because being the little guy really shows me now during these times, especially of the coronavirus and lockdown and quarantine, that it's the little guys that are rising to the top. And hopefully after all this is over, we will continue to be on top. But I mean, my fear is it's just going to return to the way it was before, but we shall see. You know, I'm hoping those of us now that are keeping busy creating these products and shows will be just as or more successful after this whole quarantine thing ends. Yeah, Eric, yeah, you know, definitely there's always different theories, you know. I mean, you know, don't forget Helen Morrison was for the defense, so, you know, the attorneys definitely vet the people out and, you know, make sure they're going to say what they want them to say for their side, you know, whether it's a defense or prosecution, so... Yeah, oh no, of course, Gacy was not insane. No, 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 he was, Gacy was an ultimate predator, uh, definitely an ultimate predator. He, you know, he wasn't uh, a genius, but he definitely was an evil genius. You know, he he was great at what he did and he got away with it for a long time because, you know, he had a perfect situation, of course. You know. Yeah, definitely fascinating stuff, yeah. And also, I also wanted to mention to you guys, if you go to my site, if you go to my web store, here at the top, which is pretty interesting, you could actually buy gift cards. So if you have friends or family members that love true crime, what's better than a gift of true crime? You can... Choose a pre-selected amount, and I act, you even get a discount, I believe, too. I think if you enter the code CRIME, you get a discount on gift cards. I'm not sure. I've never tried that, but you could try it. So that would be awesome. You would even get a discount on a gift card. But what you do is you just fill this information out, and you send it to a friend or family member. And they will either get a card, an actual physical card or a voucher with a code that will let them shop at my store. Also, for these shows I'm doing giveaways, if anyone would like to send something for a giveaway to promote your work or your art, there's my address. It's on my website. If you go to my website and hit contact, you'll be able to see my mailing address. So, if anyone wants to send me something for a giveaway, if you autograph it or if it's a unique item, send it to me and I'll give it away on these shows and it'll promote your works as well. So again, my intention is not to be selfish. My intention is to share other people's art and work with other artists. So I uh, definitely want to help people out. And as we approach the end of the show today in 20 minutes, We'll see what more orders come in. As we approach the show, I'm going to show the giveaway for today. And whoever places the last order before the hour is over gets the free giveaway. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, some little weird quirky things can be anything from comic books or true crime artifacts or one of my DVDs or a book. It could be, you know, anything. We don't know. And the cost could be anything from a dollar to hundreds. We don't know yet. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. I like this Saturday. It's it's great to talk with you guys this way. I mean, I know we communicate otherwise, but this is always a great opportunity. Yes. See, gift cards. These are this, this is great stuff, and you're helping me. You're helping the true crime lover in your life 
that needs a gift card. Yeah, these gift cards are great. You know, very, very cool. And, you know, your true crime lover in your life will love you even more. So if you just go to my website, it's actually the store site. So if you go to the store site, store.johnborowski.com today, all day today, it, when I'm live for the hour, I'm autographing products. But I also wanted to mention, if all day Saturday, you could use the code for crime, the coupon code. So it's all day Saturday. If any orders come in on Friday or Saturday before I go live, I'll save those and I'll start the show by autographing those. So that code, coupon code CRIME, you could use that all day today. It's not just for this hour. So anytime past midnight Friday to the end of midnight on Saturday, you can use that code and purchase products. 20% off. It's a great deal. Yeah, Eric, he was the ultimate predator, you know. Well, he... He inflated his numbers, you know. You know, he said he made three hundred thousand a year, but he really didn't. He inflated everything, you know. He, of course, he lied and inflated everything, you know, to serve his ego. Um, you know, he said he slept with fifteen hundred people and you know had sex with fifteen hundred, you know, men and women, and you know, of course, it was a big ego thing with him. You know, he confessed at first somewhat, then retracted it later and said he never did it, and he always tried for appeals, you know. I was always surprised by that because I thought, you know, here you have Gacy at the time period. He didn't know that. Maybe the world didn't know that he would be one of the, you know, uh, iconic serial killers of all time. But yet he had to take it back. He could have made himself out to be the most evil person who ever lived. But he always tried to hang on to that nice guy persona. You know, he couldn't get rid of that. You know, he was just this nice Polish guy from Chicago. You got to watch out for those nice Polish guys from Chicago. Not me. Sweet. Hey, Brian. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been working out. Spread the word. You know, this is a this is the way we're going to be doing conventions until all this is over, at least me. So we're all seeing each other online, and I'm available for online conventions. And like I mentioned before, you know, there are a lot of these conventions that are either canceling or postponing, but I saw one did an online convention like this. So, um, you know, if you're out there, if you're a convention or an expo, don't wait. If I could do this, if I could set all this stuff up, you know, and do signings and, you know, do all this stuff, you can do it too. I can help you. I'll help you. You know, there are many conventions out there that should be doing this and have live conventions, you know, where there are guests all day. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure Kevin Sherman, my friend and I could help conventions out. You know, if anybody needs our help, that's what we're here for. We'll help, we'll help you. We'll, we'll get an online convention. My mother used to say something and her phrase was weak broke the bridge. Now, when you think about that, literally, yeah, that's pretty obvious. If it's too much weight, it's going to break the bridge. But I don't know if it was a Polish thing or a saying, but what she meant was don't wait for an opportunity. Create it. Wait broke the bridge. So I hope these conventions and festivals are moving to this format and planning for it because we don't know how long this is going to last. So again, if you need help and you're local, or even further away, you know, I'm happy to help and my friends could help you too. I know we have several local conventions, Flashback Weekend being one of those. And I know, you know, everything is still scheduled. But again, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen. And we're helping each other. You know, that's what's great about this community. At least the serial killer, metal, and horror kind of community. <laughs> we all uh, help each other. We all, you know, have the same freaky minds. So, oh, Wow. Yeah, Dean Coral. Yeah, he was fascinating. You know, and, and that's the thing, you know, there Dean Coral was arrested just around the time when Gacy began murdering. So many people think that Gacy may have been inspired 
by Dean Corll, the Houston mass murders. It's unknown, but it could have been because it was big news. It was on television and in newspapers, you know. And when you look at those two cases, they're somewhat similar, you know, gay lust murders. And Dean Corll and Elmer Wayne Henley buried all the bodies underneath these storage units. So they all, they and on the beach, but, you know, that's another fascinating story. Um, you know, that would be another great documentary. So many, so many great ideas, so little money. Yeah, Dean Quarrel really isn't known much, the Candy Man. I believe that's what he was called, the Candy Man. Yeah. You know, again, in my mini-series, there will be a little hint that Gacy may have been inspired by Coral. But my mini-series for Gacy is going to be epic. I mean, it's minimum four to six hours. But again, during the lockdown and quarantine, I will be releasing uh, some sort of a Gacy film, you know. Um, but my true vision will be released later because it just, uh, it, you know, for my ultimate vision, there are locations and people that I need access to, and I just can't get to them during this quarantine and lockdown. So, but the fundraiser is still going. So actually I'll pull that up too for you guys. If you go to my um, GoFundMe, I'll show you guys. The John Wayne Gacy GoFundMe is still going on. We've raised $7,765. Initially, it was a $10,000 goal. It's been changed to a $27,000 goal. The initial goal funds will be used for the film and miniseries. Again, this is all going to take a little bit of a turn, and I will let everyone know how it's going, but I'm still accepting contributions and donations because there are still costs involved with making this film whether it's editing or music or props or research, there's still funds needed. And you get cool perks as far as your name being in the credits or a th special thank you or a shout out. So take a look at that, it's on GoFundMe. If you go to GoFundMe and type in the John Wayne Gacy murders film, you could donate anything from a dollar to a million. Man, just imagine if I had that, if that, if there was 27, if there was 20 grand in there over this weekend, I could finish the entire miniseries as quick as the quarantine is lifted. So I can dream, at least I could dream. Um, yes, everything is, everything as far as the perks on the Gacy fundraiser, everything is the same. So those tier amounts are still the same. So, you know, whatever you donate for those tier amounts, your name will, be, will possibly be in the credits or you could be an associate producer. And I tally all those up. So if this fundraiser is still going on for another year from now, which it may be because of this whole quarantine issue, it's cum cumulative. So let's say, you know, uh, in two months over the last year that this has been running, that you've contributed funds that tally up to an associate producer credit, you'll get that. So again, you could give 20 a week if you want. You could give 100 a week. You could give whatever you like. But in the end, the amounts will be tallied. I believe one of the contributors reached the associate producer credit amount by donating small amounts and then reach that larger amount. And then they asked me if they could have the associate producer credit on IMDb earlier. And I said, sure. And I, and I, you know, I made them the, I gave them the associate producer credit. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm amenable to working out, you know, credit with people. I'm amenable to anything at this point. <laughs> Bruce, we're going to have to check into that. Yeah, you know, I haven't, I've been so busy, I have not had the capability or the time since the virus hit to actually go into the Gacy uh, fundraiser and tally up the names. But if anybody believes they hit those amounts for associate producer credit or more, let me know. 
because I, and if you want, I could, you know, add it to the IMDB as long as, you know, that you've reached that amount. So again, since this, uh, virus said, I've just been crazy busy scrambling, you know, making money and, uh, you know, selling products, doing whatever I can, you know, and these Saturday live, you know, are great to, to do Q and A's with people to see some orders come in and, um, communicate and that, you know, that's what it's really about, you know, and that's why I wanted to have an online presence and, you know, did whatever I could to make it happen really. And it, it took a lot of time and work and it was a learning curve, but I'm set up now. So, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know guys. Let me know Bruce and Eric, you know, if you guys are ready for that, if you've reached that level, let me know. Like I said, I just haven't had the opportunity to go in there and, you know, tally up all the numbers yet. I was going to do that at the end when the film before the film was released. But now that there's a little bit of a shift, I could look at those numbers. And here's the cool thing. If you've donated, you'll get credit in the film and the miniseries. So you're gonna get double credit. That's something I should add to it. I forgot to add to that GoFundMe. I kinda, I do all this stuff on my own. So I'm spread out doing 100 things at once at you know, every day. So I have to update that. But yeah, you will receive credit in the Gacy film and the Gacy miniseries for whatever your contributions are according to the perk amounts. And you'll get the same perks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is a really great way to communicate with people. You know, I could see, you know, ultimately, I'd love to have my Saturday show have the capability where people could video or call in. Now, I don't know with OBS if that's even possible. It may be, but I don't know. Um, that's the next thing. I still want to do lectures. I know I see this every Saturday, but I have to figure it out. Facebook was talking about being able to charge for live shows. So I think for the lectures, that's what I want to do. If anyone has any ideas of how to do live lectures and charge people without me paying you know, a huge monthly fee, let me know because I think I, Zoom has it, but they want to be uh, paid uh, like $40. So, you know, and I want to be able to sell tickets and have a large group and just have one link that people could go to and see my PowerPoint. So my lectures are, it would be an hour PowerPoint and it would be another hour Q&A talking about the PowerPoint or have a viewing party and we could talk about it after, so. Yes, you get double credit for the film and the miniseries. So keep donating. You know, it really helps. It, it goes towards the film and it, it helps. I wouldn't have gotten this far without all of my contributions and friends and fans sending me things to sell, like the game book that's for sale on the auction site. One of my fans sent that to me to sell, to use the funds for the Gacy film. So I accept, you know, again, I accept these donations if you guys want to send me anything or if you want more of your work out there, you just my address is on my website. You just go to contact and whatever you send me, if you put a name on it, say, hey, do a shout out. I'll, I'll do free giveaways and do shout outs. So if you send me something, I'm not going to keep it. Believe me, I've got enough stuff. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff. So I don't want stuff. If you send me an artifact, who knows? Maybe it'll find my way in a, it, its way into my collection. But... You know, I really want to promote other people's work because that's just me. Again, I believe in karma and we're all helping each other. So, yeah, a Gacy lecture, I have that. I have right now, I currently have Holmes lecture, Gacy lecture, Dahmer, and my life among serial killer culture, which focuses on my entire life and how I got to this point and the weird stories and the strange things that have happened to me. So I want to do them. I just have to have the time and the wherewithal to figure out how to do them online. So we're going to do a giveaway today. There was one order. There's still time to do another order. We still got about five minutes, so I'm not going to show the giveaway yet, but whoever does place an order will get this free giveaway. And again, the giveaways are going to be anything 
the value from a dollar to who knows how much. And the giveaways also help promote other people. Again, you know, I want to help other people and promote their work. So that's what these giveaways are about too. Um, promoting other people's work. Yeah, Gacy Lecture, I'm definitely going to do that. It's going to happen. Sweet. It looks like I have another show scheduled. So it looks like May 21st, we're going to have John Dugan. Hopefully this will work out, but it looks like we're going to have... For May 21st, my plan for my Thursday Night Give Vocal show is I want to do like a convention madness show. So I want to have several people that usually do conventions on one of my shows and the three people that I'm talking to right now and I'd like to do multiple shows not just one of these convention shows maybe do one of them a month on my crimes of our times get vocal show and for the May 21st show we're looking at John Dugan actor who portrayed the original grandpa in Texas Chainsaw Massacre and we could talk about Ed Gein, of course. And the other guest would be James Asriel. And of course, you guys have probably seen him. He has, he collects props. He has a horror themed uh, sweet store in Arizona. Great guy. And he would display some of his props and talk about that. And also Donnie Weimer, who attends conventions and is, an, uh, is a vendor and an artist and a creator. And he creates uh, items to resell. Shirts, stickers, serial killer and horror related. So that's the show I'm planning for May 31st for Get Vocal. It's going to be interesting. Crimes of Our Time show. Yeah, Grandpa from Chainsaw. Yeah, John Dugan's awesome. He's a big supporter of mine and a great friend. Um, you know, we met through the convention circuit and uh, just a great guy. All right, we're almost finished wrapping it up. And it looks like, if there are no orders coming in right now, it looks like Melissa is going to get the freebie if no one else grabs it. So let's do the freebie now. And we got, let's give it another couple seconds, just see if anything else pops in. But yeah, I'm going to give a freebie out. Every show will do some freebies. Um, again, this is just fun. I want my Saturday show to be fun, promote it. Um, still taking orders. I'm on Get Vocal. It's, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot, you know, which is good. Keeping busy, you know, I'm polishing on the go in a good way. No one gives Patches the Clown any love, all that. Yeah, I know. Poor Patches, you know, poor Patches never gets any love. <laughs> All right, everyone. I had a great time. This is fun. Um, check out my show, Get Vocal, Crimes of Our Times. And Melissa, you will get this free giveaway. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to show you. It is issue number one of Whispers from the Void. It's a phenomenal comic book series by Charles D. Moissant of Silver Phoenix Entertainment. I have a stack of these, luckily. Great artwork, excellent, interesting comic book. So I'll be sending this to you as well. 